systems, number systems. And for the sake of number systems, we are going to um, basically talk about three numbering systems. And the first group is the decimal numbering systems that we all of us know. Secondly, we talk about hexadecimal numbering systems. And the third one is binary numbering systems. And uh, this is, uh, you can see the objective of our studies to calculate the number of, the number between decimals, binaries, and hexadecimal. Trust me, you're gonna enjoy this. It's an interesting one to study. No, not so much theory. Yeah. Now, to start us off, to start us off, uh, the word binary means two. The word binary means two, and that is ones and zeros. All right. The word by, by means two. So that is ones and zeros. And we call them bits. We call them bits. Normally bits are only zeros and ones. Uh, I have a very strong mathematical background. Um, uh, my, my master's was in pure mathematics. So, and then I have a teaching background. So, guys, be assured, I'll try and make this as simple as possible so that even a class one student, a grade one student should be able to, to get this, all right? So just go step by step. When you think um need to clarify on something, please feel free, feel free. That is the difference when you're being taught by um, a teacher and uh, someone who's a teacher. Lecturers who are teachers are actually the best. All right, so let's move on. Let's pick this up and uh, move along with it. Now, so I have just said that binary means two, and that is ones and zeros, ones and zeros, okay? Then decimal, the word deci from mathematics means 10. Deci means 10, and that's why the decimal numbers are 10, starting from zero up to nine. 10 is not one of them. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, those who are a decimal number system, they are 10. And the beautiful thing is that in networking, we start counting from zero. We don't start counting from one. Now machines, routers, switches, laptop, mobile phones, machine use the binary numbering system. So that's why it's called the machine system, machine numbering system. The human beings, we human beings, we prefer to use the decimal numbering system, zero to nine, right, for numbering. And uh, that therefore means that um, this equipment, whether they are network devices or end devices, this equipment, they have, they use addresses, they use addresses, and the addresses they use, the addresses they use are normally in form of bits, but they can be converted to decimals. Now, uh -huh. let me just try to make this clearer for you guys. Uh, let me start with how do human beings see the numbers? How do human beings see the numbers? Human beings, like you and me, they see numbers in form of decimals. For example, 192.168.1.11.1. That is the IP, that is an, an example of an IP address. An example of a network address is 192. 168.11.0.11.0. So for us, the addresses as we see them and as we use them are always in what is called dotted decimal notation because 192 is separated from 168 by a dot, a dot or a decimal, all right? A dot or a decimal point, all right? Now you can see for our own viewing, it's more comfortable to do 191 11.10, 191.68.11.1 for the router interface, and for another interface is 
dot one. Uh, let's see how machines see the same addresses. Machines see the same addresses in form of bits of zeros and ones. Machines see the same addresses in form of bits and zeros and ones. So it's, when you say 192, the machine sees it in, in form of 1100000. Okay? When you say 168, the machine will see it in form of 1010100000. All right? And then so on and so forth. So trust me, one of the things that we're going to be doing today is to know how to convert from binary to decimal know how to convert from binary to decimal and decimal back to binary and decimal back to binary. So when you assign a device an IP address, the machine converts it to binary and you can see the binary is still separated by the decimal points, the decimal points. All right. So having seen how machines look at the addresses, one thing that you must have known, let me just zoom in this again. One thing I need you to note here is that each and every each and every let me just find my uh -huh. yes here we go all right all right i'm just looking for my because i think i have zoomed it yeah here we go look at this uh, each and every part of the binary has eight bits, has eight bits. They can all be zeros, they can all be ones, or they can be a combination of ones and zeros. And one thing we must agree on is that in each and every part, in each and every part, there are eight bits. There are eight bits, okay? Each and every part has eight bits. And there is, if it is eight bits, then we call it an octet, octet, again, octet, from mathematics, the word octagon is an eight-sided figure. An octagon, octagon is an eight-sided figure, and therefore it is related to eight. And that's why each and every part has um, eight uh, bits. Each and every part has eight bits, zeros and ones. And the total number of parts are actually four. One. Two, three, and four. We have four of them, which basically represent 192, 168, the 10, the something. Okay. So I've said because each part has eight bits, we call it an octet. So we have four octets from left to right, first octet, second octet, third octet, and fourth octet. This is how all IP addresses, all IP version four addresses are actually represented are actually represented now now uh, moving forward here i yesterday uh, asked you guys to get to know the powers of two and this is something that don't take it so much for granted because it's real and you're going to experience it much a lot. So I told you to go up to 2 power 20, but for now, for now, we're only going to learn of from 2 power 0 up to 2 power 7. And uh, from 2 power 8 up to 2 power 20, we will meet them in in another chapter, chapter 11, chapter 11. We are now doing chapter 5. All right, so let's go through this drill. 2 power 7. 2 power 6, 2 power 5, 2 power 4, 2 power 3, 2 power 2, 2 power 1, and 2 power 0. As I told you, as a mathematical rule, any number raised to power 0 is 1. So 2 power 0 is 1, 2 power 1 is 2, 2 power 2 is 4, 2 power 3 is 8, 2 power 4 is 16, 2 power 5 is 32, 2 power 6 is 64, and 2 power 7 is 128. 128. Now, I'm assuming you guys have mastered those ones, and you can say 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 
128. Just mentioning the uh, multiples of two from left to right and right to left. After that, the other thing that I did tell you guys to master and anyone who will be listening to uh, this recording later on is you need to know the, uh, the, the addition of these multiples of two from the highest to the smallest and from the smallest to the largest, from the largest to the smallest and vice versa. So the first one will be something like 128, 192, 224, 240, 248, 252, 254, 255. 128, 192, 224, 240, 248, 252, 255. That is, so 128 plus 64 is 192. 192 plus 32 is 224. 224 plus 16 is 240. 240 plus 8 is 248. 248 plus 4 is 252. 252 plus 2 is 254. And 254 plus 1 is 255 guys i need that to be at the at your fingertips man because you know it looks so simple yet it's gonna become so important in terms of application soon enough all right so please do not take it for granted we are going to need that simple exercise all right i teach from simple to complex and so i start from what you know as we go to what you don't know. So again, I repeat, don't take it for granted. Know how to add your multiples of two because that is going to come handy soon enough. One for the last time, 128 plus 64, 192 plus 32, 224 plus 16, 240 plus 8, 248 all right, let me add from 1 coming to 128. So 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 plus 8 is 15. 15 plus 16 is 31. 31 plus 32 is 63. 63 plus 64, 127. 127 plus 128 is 255. 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 4. 7 plus 8 is 15 plus 16 is 31. Plus 32 is 63. Plus uh, 64 is 127. 127 plus 128 is 255. 255. Again, know how to add, how to add them. How to add them. All right. All right. Now, since we have already learned that one uh, that uh, the total number of bits in each and in each octet. Remember what octet is every part of an IP version 4 address. So the, every octet has eight bits. They can be all ones, all zeros, or a combination of ones and zeros. All right. Uh, I know that someone is having a question. Oh, that's OK. All right, all right. That's super, super good. All right, then. We now want to start to note how can we convert from a binary to decimal? Very simple, guys. How do we convert from binary to decimal? As I mentioned, you need to know your multiples of two. So we're going to write our multiples of two here. I hope you're taking your notes slowly. So my multiples of two is 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right. Now, then. I am going to write my binary here, one, one, zero. Let me just take a pointer here. So one, one, zero, 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 zero. That's my binary. There are eight of them. I'm going to need to convert them. And by the way, not this. The multiples of two are also eight here. Please don't forget that. There's a reason why they are eight, because each multiples of two represent each bit on an octet. So the first bit from left is represented by 128, the second bit by 64, so and so so on and so forth. So to convert this into decimal, this is a binary. What you're going to do is simple. Where there's a one, multiply with the multiples of two there. So one times 128 is 128 here. Okay. One times 64 is 64. You and I know that zero times any number is zero. 
So wherever there's a zero, we'll obviously get zero. And that's why it's good to concentrate with the only numbers that have a one. So one times 28 is 128 and one times 64 is 64. You add everything and here we're going to get 192. And that's our answer. That's our answer, you know, and it's that simple. It's that simple. Look at this. Look at this here. So we have our first number is here. One, one, zero, 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 zero. This is like the one we have done. We got 192. The second one is one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. And we are going to multiply them by the multiples of two, which are up here. So one times 128 is 128. Uh, 0 times 64, of course, is 0. 1 times 132, 32. We skip the 1 for 0. We go to where there's a 1 times 8 is 8, and there's no any other 1 there, which means you're going to be adding 128 plus 32. That should be 160 plus 8 is 168, and that's how we convert it to decimal. Let's look at uh, this one. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. All right? So uh, we can skip that where there's a zero they will all be zeros so we look, only look where there's a one so one times eight is eight one times two is two and one times one is one eight plus two is ten plus one is eleven finally we have zero 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 one zero one zero so again there's one under eight and one under two and that is eight plus two and we got our ten we get our ten and that should be clear Normally, conversion from binary to decimal is very easy, very easy. The thing is, conversion from decimal back to binary, that's where we need to pay much attention. And uh, this time around, I think I'm going to teach you the different method here. I'm going to go to the... I'm going to go to the notes here and... Uh, I'm going to pick up uh, conversion from uh, decimal back to binary. I'm going to teach you guys through an activity here. So if you can see my screen, I can make it a little bit wider here. And uh, this is it. This is it. Uh, I'm going to need you guys to uh, unmute because you're going to respond to to this. Uh, I don't know whether I can put the chat. I don't know. I don't know. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So let me just give the rules here. So we have a number 107. We have a number 107. This number, we need to we need to write it into binary. Okay. And so to write this number into binary, we are going to need to have a few rules here. OK. So the first thing that we're going to do is that. We need to reduce this number 107 because we are going to compare 107 with each and every multiple of two. You can see my positional numbers here are here 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2 and 1. All right, and so we are going to compare 107, which is the number we are given. We're going to compare it with 128 all the way to 1. So the first question is this. You ask yourself, is 128, sorry, is, is 128, is, sorry, yeah, is 107 greater than or equal to 128? 107, the number we are given. Is it greater than or equal to? No, it is less. So if the number we are given is less than the first 128, we put a zero there. OK, and then we now go to the next number, which is. OK, which is uh, the, our next number is actually um, 64. OK, so we go to 64. And when we go to 64, we want to compare 107 with uh, with 64. 107 with 64. 
So to do that, to do that, we are going to see that 107 is greater than 64. So if 107 is greater than 64, we put a 1 under 64, and then we get the difference. 107 minus 64 is actually 43. So you're going to need to do a quick, maybe you can do that with your exercise book or something like that, so that get that very fast. 107 minus 64, since 64 is smaller than 107, uh, the difference is 43. The difference is 43. And if we get 43, now 43 is a very interesting number because your objective is one. Your objective is reduce that number in such a manner that you are able to get among 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. Which numbers can we add to get 43? Okay. So the first thing to note is that 32 plus 8 is 40. Remember, we are remaining in 43. 32 plus 8 is actually 40. So 43 minus 40 is 3. And to get 3, we need to add 2 and 1. What do I mean? 32 plus 8 is 40. 40 plus 2 is 42. Plus 1 is 43. And then I just need to fill the remaining ones with zero. I've, I'm teaching you guys like I've never taught this. Normally I teach it with a longer method, but I found this method a bit shorter. All right. So uh, I don't know whether uh, someone would like me to repeat that. Repeat, please. It can. All right. All right. That's okay. Let me reset this one. I just need to reboot uh, all of them here. Okay, some kind of logic here because I'm teaching you guys to be smart so that we can do these things offhead. You don't need to rely on your calculator or on your what? Rely on your own mind. All right. So the first thing to note is this: we are given one or seven to con convert it to binary. We're given one or seven to convert it to binary. So what we do is that we are going to compare one or seven with all the multiples of two. And we start with 128 onwards, the bigger one. Eh? So 107 is actually less than 128. If it is less than any of the, the numbers, put a zero there. You can see a zero under 128. Then you move to the next number. We compare 107 with 64. We realize now 107 is bigger. So note that if the number we are given is smaller, you put a zero. If it's bigger, you put a 1 and you get your minus. You get the difference. And we saw 107 minus 64 is actually 43. 107 minus 64 is 43. Now from there now, I need you to play around with the numbers. Ask yourself, you know 32, you know 16, you know 8, you know 4, you know 2, you know 1. When you need 43, at least we know that 32 plus 8 is 40 and we have 43. So, which means we have already found two numbers here. 32 is a 1, and 8 is also a 1. We now remain with 3. 3 is 2 and 1. And we put a 1 under them. 1 under that, and 1 under that. I fill the remaining one with zeros. The remaining numbers will now be filled with 0. And that's it. That's it. And that's how we do that. If I click check, for those who want to do it, this activity is found on page 519. But it's good to see first what I'm doing here. You can see we are told the binary values have you have entered for all positions are correct. Please click new number to continue. Let's do another one. New number. Wow. 73. I welcome anyone who wants to, you know, Anyone who wants to help me to just uh, do this? We know that 73, smaller than 128, what do we do? We write a zero. 73 is bigger than 64, okay? 
if it is bigger than 64, obviously you put a 1 and you minus. Okay? You say, what is uh, 73? You just do that on your excess book, minus 64. Okay? And the answer that we are basically going to get is 9. Okay? So, 73 uh, minus 64 is actually 9. And uh, uh, when you get 9, now ask yourself, which numbers can you add to give you 9? Guys, I need an answer from the floor, from the class. 9 is which number, pro which number? It is 8, it is 8 and 1. 8 very and good. 1. 8 and 1. Thank you very much. 8 and 1. Put it, put a 1 under 8, put a 1 under 1. Fill the rest with zeros. I want to make math to be easy. Math should not be hard always. Math should be very easy. Yeah, this is the beginning of what you call mathemat uh, networking mathematics. I will make it in the easiest way possible for you. We have this chapter and we have chapter 11. And I'm the one who trains almost everyone in this country. All the instructors, I train them in subnetting because it's one of the toughest uh, chapters, but it will be your easiest, trust me. So we get this as our answer. Fill the rest with zeros. When I click check, it's correct. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. 148. We all know that 148 is bigger than 128. So that means there will be a one here. There will be a one. And then you take um, take one, 148. You subtract uh, 128. What is the answer? We get a 20. We get a 20. Once you get, so your objective is this. And this is what I want you to get. Reduce the number to in a manner such that you can get what you can just add. That means you need to know 64 plus any number, 32 plus n number, 16 plus n number, 8 plus n number. Give me, someone to give me 20 is what plus what? Sixteen and four. Very good. Sixteen and four. And four. Good, good. Fill the, fill everything else with a zero, and we are done. Fill everything else with a zero, and we are actually done in this. And I click check. Is correct. Give me ninety. I want I want someone to uh, pick up that. Can you do it very fast? You can just give me where to put the one, and then I fill the rest with zeros. I'm waiting, guys. Ninety. The first one, where do I put the first one? Someone, let's do this as a team. Anyone can unmute and just speak. On 54. Good, there's a one. Uh -huh. What is the remainder? 26. 26, Which? where do I put my ones again? Give me two, two numbers or three numbers. There might not be two. Give me numbers that when I add, I get 26. 16, 8, and 4. Good, 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 good. 16, which is 16 plus 8 is actually 24. And then yeah. plus 4 is 8 and 2. two. 8 and 2. Good, good, yeah. good, good. So 16 plus 8 is 24. 24 plus 2 is 26. That's how simple it is. Fill the rest with zeros. And here you go. You're going to have the binary here. You're going to have your binary. And you can check that. All right. So please, 5.1.9, it's a, uh, an assignment you don't want to miss. Please, uh, Lenita, you can re note that down. Uh, anyone note it down, you'll put it in the group. 5.1.9. 5.19 is an activity that everyone wants to practice for. There was one for uh, conversion of binary decimal, 5.16. We also have 5.16 here where you convert from binary. Just look at 128 plus 16 plus 1 plus 2. Uh, and this is, and by the way, that reminds me. Let's convert some binary decimal here. I'm having 100, 11, 11. 
I'm waiting for the answer. Shout it. Uh, make sure you're not using a calculator. You better use use your your pen and paper, please. Okay. Someone? Someone? Uh, uh, someone needs to mute themselves. All right. Someone give me an answer here. You can put it in the chat. You can just say it. It's okay if, if you are in a noisy environment. Shout it out and you're going to get it here. Anyone? 109. Is it? Oh, 109. 109. Okay. Let's check that. Oh, we didn't get it. We didn't get it. That was not correct. Someone, 155. 155. Correct. 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 Let's say one more. One more here. Let me give you a shortcut for this one. If you have very few zeros, if you have very few zeros, you know that if you add 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8, 4, 2, 1, you get 255. And you only have two zeros at 32 and at 2, which is 32 plus 2 is actually 34, just minus, minus 255 minus 34. And you will get your answer. So you, you use the odd one out. Eh? So you take zeros, the, where there are zeros, minus, minus from the total, and you will get your number. If you use that shortcut, what do you get? Someone? Someone? Instead of adding all the ones, the multiples, you add all the zeros you subtract from the total. 221. Good. 221. And we check. And that's good. That's good. That's very good, guys. Find it on 516 and practice as much as you can. I um, ask you to repeat once more because there's something which I have not understood there. Oh, okay. Just tell yeah. us which one? Which one do you want us to oh, do? You uh, repeat this one? Uh, this question, this question. Uh, you just get the decimal for you. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. So what happens? Mm -hmm. Initially, we need to add 128 plus 64 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 1 without adding 2 and, f and 32 where there are zeros. So what you do, take where there's a zeros. It's like you're doing the opposite way. Only take the zeros. Only if the ze This method only applies when the zeros are fewer. They are 2 or they are 3. Take the positions for zeros, add them, subtract from the total. You know the total is always... 255. Every octet can only add, can only range from 0 to 255. So take 32 where there's a 0 and 2 where there's a 0. Add them, you get 34. Subtract from the total, which is the constant 255, you get 221. Is that okay? What I'm asking, are you adding all the numbers 128 plus 64 plus no, 16? No. Hmm. I'm just, I'm just adding. Can you see where there's a zero? Can you see the uh, first zero is under is which? Un under yes. 32. So, oh. Another and, one uh, is under, which uh, one? under two. Two. So add those ones, you get 34. Yes. 32 yeah. plus two, okay? Yeah. Then subtract from, if all the numbers were one, you will actually get 255. You get that? Yeah. So you subtract from the total, which is 255, and then you still get your 221. So that's yeah. shorter than adding 128, 64, 16, 8, 4, and one. So thank you. Yeah, All right. That is, that is better than adding. Yeah. One. Exactly. Exactly. So now, I will not leave you guys there. Let's all mute now. I want to know this. In the preparation of chapter eleven, because this chapter is gonna prepare you guys for the eleventh chapter, which is coming, which is very hot. Yet it is the foundation of networking. 
foundation of computer networking. Uh, I, I'm going to introduce you to what is called a binary game. Binary game. You can note it down. It's found on 5.1.10. Please, uh, the, our class assistant, please note down those ones and you put them in the in the WhatsApp group. So 5.1.10, 5.1.10, gonna find a link here. So what you do, you're gonna click on that link. And let's wait uh, for it to just load in a few. It's gonna be loading in a few here. All right, all right, there we go. There we go, and it's not loading completely. Ah, here we go. It's gonna load here, and when it loads, uh, you're gonna click on play the game. Click on play the game, and I click, and you need to log into your account. You can't play this game uh, before, yeah, before doing that. And there's something here. You're gonna have to check it out on how to uh, challenge your friend here in the game. So what happens is this. You're gonna play the games and you share your score. And I will need you guys to share your score in the group so that we see where has everyone reached, okay? So let's see the game open first. Let me see this game is going to be opening in a short while. The rules are very simple. This game, you're going to use your multiples of two. I believe you can see them. At the top here is 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. And so is at the bottom here, 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. All right. So, those are, so the rule is you're going to get numbers here let me just uh, play the game so that i give you the there yeah. so the rule is you're going to have zeros and ones bits here under each and every multiple of two okay so where there's a question mark here where the question mark here you're going to click on it and then you tell us where the one here is under 32 so you can click on 32 with your uh, with your mouse or you can just type them on the keyboard and you press enter okay and that will disappear when there's 255 here, then there's a number here, then you're gonna you're gonna click on bits that add up to 255. For example, 255 is the total. Everything needs to be uh, 255, and that's gonna disappear. 128, we're gonna click on which bits add up to 128. It's only 128 here, and you're good to go. 17, which numbers add up to 17? Should be one and 16. When there's a wrong one somewhere, click on it and it will be zero. 16 should only be 16, so change everything else to zero. 240, you can see now the power of knowing how, what to add. 240 is always 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16. I remove this one here. This number here is 32. This number here is 3. Here is 254, which is just two, everything minus one. Everything minus the first one. So this all should be ones here. Ah, yeah. Zero. This means there should, no, should be no one here. And you're good to go. And you're still moving. 32 is 32 here. I hope you're noting the game. 129 is 128 plus one. 24 is 16 plus eight. Let's go. Two is just two here. Remove that. Four is just four here. Remove that. And level one is complete. I will need you guys to reach level three. Let me play level two for now. 128 is here. Good. One third one should be 128 plus three. 128 plus three is 131. 31 should be 16 plus 15. 15 is the total of this one here. 35 should be 32 plus three, okay, there, 65 is 64 plus one. Remove this one here. Uh, this one is actually 16 plus eight, which is 24. 54 is everything else apart from one. 128 is only this one here. 30, 130 is 128 plus two. Good, 
And uh, let's go. This one is uh, 32 plus 2 is 34. Let's enter. This is 129. 12 should be 8 plus 4. No, 8 plus 4 it should be 12. Correct. 254 is everything apart from 1. Look at that. 64 is just 64. I remove this one here. 15 should be 1 up to 8. 34 shall be 32 plus uh, 2. 13 should be what? 8 plus 2 plus 1. Move this one here. Uh, 65 is 64 plus 1. Correct. When I get to level 2, I'll leave you guys to continue here. So 4 is here. Sorry, 4 is here. 24 is uh, 16 plus 8. Level 2 is there. Look at that. Now, listen, when you get to level three, the numbers will disappear. The one to the powers of two on the bottom and at the top is go are gonna disappear. Let me get feedback, guys. Is that something you guys can play? Is it a game you can play? Yeah, sure. Correct. Now, this is the secret. Find time to play. Don't ignore it because it's a game. Most people know how to play games. It's gonna build your number ability when you'll be doing subnetting because we need that knowledge in chapter 11. So between now and when we get to chapter 11, I will I will encourage if I were you, I will play it like every day before I sleep. And even when I get time in the office, I will need time to just play that. All right. So uh, that is very, very much OK. And now I need to just take you through this, through the octave, the numbering system for IPv4. Uh, we know that IPv4 has four octets, like 192.168.10.10. Any part is called an octet because it can be converted to binary of eight bits. Every octet can range from zero up to 255. There's no 256 and beyond. So four octets that we're able to see here, that is for IP version four. And we're able to see, of course, the octets are there very, very well. OK, and in total, if each part has four, I mean, eight bits, each octet has eight bits, first octet, second octet, third and fourth octet, then eight times four is actually 32. And that's why the IPv4 is always called a 32 bit address, 32 bit address, because it contains 32 binary bits. OK, so do note that. The reason why I'm telling you to note that is because we want to get to the next numbering system, ladies and gentlemen, and the next numbering system is called hexadecimal numbering system. Why are we learning about hexadecimal numbering system? It's because it is used by two numbers. It is used by two numbers. The first number that uses it I mean, the first address, it's used by two addresses. The first address that uses it is called a MAC address, which is also called the physical address. If you want to see your physical address, just get into your CMD and say IP config space forward slash all. IP config space forward slash all. Press enter. When you press enter, here is how you to note your physical address or MAC address. You must look at your adapter. Right now, me, I'm using Wi-Fi. And so my physical address is going to be here. So look at this address well. 84-1B-77-64-1A-D5. That is my MAC address. And that MAC address, it's very important why is it called a physical address? It's called a physical address because the manufacturer of this, my computer, created this MAC address with my device. This ad That address identifies my device everywhere. So it's called a physical address because everywhere this machine goes, it goes with the physical address that is also called MAC address, media access control address, okay? The command for viewing that is ipconfig space forward slash all space forward slash all 
The other, and you can be able, you, you, I don't know whether you saw it, the address was comprising of numbers and letters. 841B776A, okay? Those ones are not decimal numbers or they are not alphabetical numbers or letters. Those ones are hexadecimal numbers. I will tell you what hexadecimal is in a few minutes. The other type of address that uses hexadecimal numbers is an IP version 6 address. Like mine right now, one of the IP address for mine here is FE8A. You can already see their numbers and letters there. So these are the only two addresses that utilize hexadecimal numbers. Which ones are the hexadecimal numbers that we know about? We have 16 of them, 16 hexadecimal numbers, 16 hexadecimal numbers. And the 16 hexadecimal numbers, let me just zoom in this and let you guys learn here. So the word hexa comes from the word hexagon. Ladies and gentlemen, hexagon has so many sides, people. Someone to tell me. Six. Very good. Hexagon has six sides. And we say the word desi means 10 because those are the 10 decimal numbers from zero to nine. So hexadecimal numbers are comprised of the 10 decimal numbers from zero to nine and six more numbers here. But these six numbers are actually letters of the alphabet only from A to F, A, B, C, D, E, F, All right? A, B, C, D, E, F. Whereby, whereby A, A represents A normally represents 10, okay? So A here represents 10, B represents 11, C represents 12, D represents 13, E represents 14, and F represents 15. That needs to be understood, my friends. A, hexadecimal numbers are 16. Hexa is 6, deci is 10. 10 plus 6 is 16. So the first 10 are the decimal numbers from 0 to 9. Then the last are A, B, C, D, E, F, 6 of them, where A represents 10, B is 11, C, D, E, F, and F represents 15. All right. Now, we want to learn how to translate from hexadecimal to decimal and decimal back to hexadecimal. For you to translate from decimal to hexadecimal or hexadecimal back to decimal, you must pass through the binary. You must pass through the binary, all right? You know that in IP version four, decimal numbers, we were using numbers from one, two, four, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, the eight numbers, 60, 128, 64, 32, 8, 4, 2, and 1. In hexadecimal numbers, we are not going to use the eight of them. We will use the first four. We will only use 1, 2, 4, and 8. We will only use 1, 2, 4, and 8. Now, that even makes our work much easier. If we only use 8421, 8421, on your exercise book right now, take your pen. I want you to write from left to right. Write 8, 4, 2, and 1. 8, 4, 2, and 1. 8, 4, 2, and 1. It's because I want to give you a number here. I want to give you a number here to translate from... Uh, hexadecimal to binary. For example, I'll give you number seven, number seven. If you compare eight, four, two, and one, 
Which of those numbers, if you add, you get seven? Let me get feedback from some of you guys. Four, two, and one. Eight, four, two. Four, two, and one. Very good. Four, two, and one gives us seven. So what I want you to do, since you have written eight, four, two, and one, put a one under those three numbers. Put a one under seven, four, I mean, under four, two, one. Put one under four, put one under two, and put one under one, and then put a zero under eight. If you have done that correctly, if you have done that correctly, then you realize that your address should leave zero, one, one, one. Your number should read zero one one one. I'm gonna give you another one again. I'll give you uh nine. Nine is which number plus which number among eight four two one? Nine is eight and one. You, very good. You need to write eight and one, which means put a one under eight and put a one under one. Put a one under eight, a one under one. You should get one and put zeros under four and two put zero under four and two you should get here you should be getting one zero zero one okay one zero zero one now another trial here i'm gonna give you a a a we know very well represents ten ten so which numbers do you have to give you 10? Eight and two. Very good. So eight and two, good. So put a one under eight and a one under two, then put zero under four and one, okay? And you should get one, zero, one, zero. The last one is 15. Sorry, F. If I give you F, which is a hexadecimal number, F, represent 15. So which numbers do you have to give you 15 guys? 8421. Eight, very, eight, very, very good. 8421, which means 1111 one, 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 one oh, will yeah. give you F. Very good. Very good. You see how working with hexadecimal is easier? And so we'll be working with hexadecimal numbers. For your exam, not Hexadecimal numbers are used by IPv6 addresses and MAC addresses. Very, very important. Now, let me take you through the structure of an IP version 6 address. We're going to compare it with IPv4 and we get to note the differences. We get to note the differences. All right. The first difference we have just seen today that IP version 4 is made up of four parts first octet second octet third octet and fourth octet that is ipv4 ip version 6 is not four octets ip version 6 is made up of eight parts eight parts okay we have eight parts here one two three four five six is here seven and eight Wonderful, all right? Eight parts. Now, in IPv4, each part is separated by a decimal point in IPv4. In IPv6, each part is separated by a colon, a full colon. Each part is separated by a colon. That's another difference there. Then, in IPv4, each part is called an octet. Each part is called an octet. In IPv6, each part is given a name that is not official yet, but we are allowed to use it. It's called a hextet. Each part is called a hextet. So we have eight hextets in IP version 6. The parts are called hextet. And that if IPv4, octet means eight because there are eight bits in IPv4. What about IPv6? Now, in IPv6, number one thing to note is that each part is not made up of four bits. No, each part is made up of eight, sorry, 
four hexadecimal numbers. Four hexadecimal numbers. It can be zero zero zero, one 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 one, two 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 two, a a a a, b b b b, e e e e, f f f f, because they are hexadecimal numbers from zero to f, zero to f. So each hexad is made up of four hexadecimal numbers. Now, a few minutes ago, I have given each of you, or I've given the class, I've given you hexadecimal numbers. I can remember I've given you seven, you wrote it and you got four bits. I gave you 15, which was F, you got four bits, one, 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 one. I gave you, I think, A, you got one, zero, one, zero, which therefore means that any hexadecimal number can be written to give us four bits using eight, four, two, one. You see, eight, four, two, one. All right. And therefore, that therefore means that if each part is made up of four hexadecimal numbers, either zero, 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 or one, 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 or five, 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 or nine, 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 or D, 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 or F, 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 F. Let's pick the two extremes. You know, zero can also be written into binary to give us zero, 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 zero. So if you take one zero hexadecimal number, it will give us four zeros here. You can see the four zeros here into binary. The second zero will give us another four zeros here. The third zero will also give us another four zero. And the fourth zero will give us another four zeros. Let, what about F? You guys told me that F written into binary, you get 1111 because that is 15. So if you write the first F into binary, you get four ones here. The second F in binary, you get four ones. The third F here, you get four ones here. And the fourth F, you also get four ones. Which means if out of the four hexadecimal numbers, each of them gives us four bits, and they are four. If one hexadecimal number gives us four bits, what about the four hexadecimal numbers? Okay, we multiply four times four, and we get what class? What is four times four? Sixteen. Four times four, very good, is sixteen. And sixteen is where the name Hextet comes from. The name Hextet comes from uh, uh, 16. Therefore, each and every Hextet, we call it we call it an Hextet because each and every part can be written to give us 16 bits, and therefore the name Hextet. Therefore, the name Hextet. Hextet means 16. All right. Is that clear? Guys, I, I I need to teach you that well. I need to give you every information that I know about this. If I assume that is okay, let me just mention something here. Last year, the Communications Authority, which is a government parastatal, which is in charge of all the IT infrastructure, in charge of all the service providers in the country, they are the guys who can switch off the internet and put it on back in the country, okay? Last year, like I mentioned that to you, last year, Communications Authority, who speaks on behalf of the Kenyan government when it comes to IT infrastructure, they made a public announcement that the continent of Africa, whose regional internet registry is called Afrinic, they announced just like all the other four remaining regional internet registry in north america south america europe asia all right just like they announced that the whole world has run out of ip version 4 addresses africa was the last one to run out of those addresses in the year 2020 and now communications authority which is known as CA, they announced 
it is now time that every ISP, every telecommunications organization, every company need to start strategizing on how to transition from IPv4 to IPv6. That was a public communications, and it is true, ladies and gentlemen, that the whole world has run out of IPv4. Okay. You realize IPv4 has only one for 128 bits, which were four parts, four octets, and we are used to it. 192.16.10.10. Very simple. Now, you know what's going to happen next. It is now time. Anyone in this field, including you and me, we must rush very fast and start learning about IP version 6 because that is the future. Some Western countries, they have already started making the transition from version 2 to version 6, version 4 to version 6. We should not be left behind. And therefore, you wouldn't be early. This wouldn't be the best place for you to start learning about IPv6 because whether we like it or not, this is the near future. It's already happening. Only that for a government to implement it, it takes time because the government has to start by training its citizens and its employees. And that's what Kenyatta University and other academies, other Cisco networking academies are already doing. OK, and you need to know you need to get a trainer or an instructor or a lecturer who knows the ins and outs of IPv6 because this is the future. This is where we are going. We can't move back anymore. We can only move forward. And therefore, this is the beginning. Take this very seriously. And make sure every bit of information that I'm giving you guys, and this information will be there on YouTube from tonight or tomorrow. And you can go it over and over. Get every piece of information. You might never find someone who will teach this the way I teach it because I have perfected so much of this. I've been doing this for over seven years and I have got a good master of it with a lot of humility. I've understood it and I teach my colleagues and I don't take pride in that. It is by the grace of God, of the grace of Allah that I'm able to do this. So take it very seriously. I will keep on giving you more and more information. But the first thing you need to do, you need to handle the number 610 which is hexadecimal used by both IPv6 and uh, MAC addresses. So right now, what I want you guys to do is that we want to learn how can we translate decimal to hexadecimal uh, uh, number systems here. A question? Yes. Uh, maybe related to what you have just said All about right. uh, moving from IPv4 to IPv6. Correct. So what happens to the IPv4? They are being they are being phased out uh, 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 slowly by slowly. One thing I didn't tell you is that we only had 4.3 billion IPv4 addresses, of which some of them were used as private, some of them are special types of addresses. Look at the world population. The world population is about 8 billion, 7.9 billion out of 4.3 billion trust me some of us even amongst us in this meeting now some of us have four gadgets you have two phones you have a tablet you have a laptop and you have a desktop computer at work each of those devices need an ip address now if one person has four and we have four billion people, let's say not 4.3 let's say four billion people in the planet let's say they even have two addresses only four billion they have two, or they have four devices. Four billion times four, 16 billion, man. So, so, and we're having IoT. We're having people buying mobile phones in Nairobi or in the world. Every day, people buy mobile phones. So, what is currently happening? The world has overutilized the IPv4 address, and we are now forced to do what is called sharing, which is a temporary solution. Currently, we share our addresses. You can even find one. There's a technology called network address translation, which can be able to make even a thousand people to share one address. Five hundred people share only one address. OK, and of course, I'll come to teach you guys that. So time has come. 
there's a lot of disadvantages with IPv4, and IPv6 has solved most of the of those disadvantages. Okay, IPv6 is fast, it's secure, it has enough addresses. If IPv4 are 4.3 billion, do you know how many IPv6 they are? IPv6 are three had over 340 and the cillion. What is and cillion? Oh my God. And the, I mean, 4.3 billion. A billion is a number with nine zeros. And the cillion is a number with 36 zeros, which means if you have one and the cillion, only one, one of the addresses, one and the cillion of those addresses, IPv6, it can, one and the cillion can actually give IP addresses to, if you had 150 billion, if you have 150 billion, uh, if you have 150 billion apps or worlds, like we have the app here, which has all the six continents. Eh? So if you have those continents, let's say if our continents were, it was not just one, like one world, like one world as you know it, uh, North America, South America, the Oceania, Africa, Europe, Asia. If you had 145 billion of such, I, one exadecillion will still be able to pro provide them addresses. And that's one person, one network person, or one scientist says that if you went to all the beaches of the world, how many beaches do we have in, Ken in Kenya only? Eh? We have Nyayo Beach. How many beaches do we have in Mombasa, for example? We have beaches along Lake Victoria. We have beaches along the Indian Ocean. Now go to all the beaches of the world and count a grain of sand. You know, pick one piece of sand, one grain of sand. If you can count all the grains of sand, then you can actually assign every grain of sand, you can assign it an IPv6 address. That is actually just a statement that tries to emphasize the fact that the IPv6 addresses are extreme. There are so many. We cannot exhaust them into the billions and billions of generations to come. And that's why, you know, IPv4, when it was created, it was not created with the idea of no one knew we could watch news on your mobile phone. No one knew that. No one knew you will be using your phone as a camera and the phone could take pictures and share social media. If you told someone 20, 30 years ago of social media, they will laugh at you. What is even that? Huh? If you told someone Facebook, tell them about Twitter. They wouldn't believe you. They would say you are dreaming. Hmm? Who knew Citizen TV will now be watched on YouTube? If you count the number of people who watch news in the evening on the mobile phone and on the TV sets, the number on the mobile phone is much higher. If you count how many TVs now, we have TV stations. TV stations that are on YouTube, you'll be surprised. So all these developments, IoT, Internet of Things, whereby we are connecting the unconnected to the Internet. No one, no, when they made IP before, they didn't think of such development. And that's why they have to think a billion times to make an address which is not going to be exhausted soon enough. I use so many words, uh, but I don't know whether I answered your question. Yeah, that's that's OK. <laughs> you have okay. really expanded on it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Karibu. Karibu, sir. Yeah. Uh, so guys, uh, without much ado, I can pick up a few questions after after we are done. We are almost done. Uh, let's learn how to convert from decimal to hexadecimal. So the rule is this to convert from hexadecimal to, de to hexadecimal. You must convert the decimal back to binary first, then binary back to hexadecimal. So. I'm going to depend on what you do. So take pen and paper right now. We're given number 168. We're given the number here, 168. I have already taught you how to convert from decimal to binary. So I'm going to need you 
convert 168 to the binary of eight numbers. Use 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. So, like we did, we know that 168 is greater than 128, isn't it? So put one under 128. I hope you've done. So please write 128 from left to right. 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. Then because 168 is greater than 128, which is the first number on your left, put one under 168. Put a one under 168. And then I want you to subtract 128, 168 minus 128. What is the remainder, guys? The remainder is 40. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The remainder is 40. Now, the task is with you. Which numbers do we have to give you 40? As we did. 32 and 8. Very good. 32 and 8. So put one under 32 and put one under 8. Fill the remaining with the zeros. And you are done. You have converted 168. You have converted it to uh, to, to to binary. And you should have 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. 1, 0, 1, 0. 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. After you convert to binary, then now you need to convert that binary to hexadecimal. How do you do that? Very important. Those ones are 8 bits. You are going to divide them in the middle, separate them in the middle, so that I have 4 on the left, and I have 4. So write them down there. I want to see 1, 0, 1, 0 on one side, 1, 0, 0, 0 on another side. So divide them into two groups. Of four four two groups of four four once you do that once you write them in two groups of four four one zero one zero and one zero 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 now we're going to use eight four two one so right on top of each of them from left to right eight four two one eight four two one and the other one also eight four two one then i want you guys to tell me the first one is 84201 i want you to add them numbers that has numbers that have one under them add those two numbers and tell me what is the answer for the first one on the left if you add the numbers under that have one under them what do you get 10 and 8 we get 10 and 8 very good we get 10 and 8 now, 10 is which number in hexadecimal? 8. Very good. 10 is A. And if 10 is A, and we know that here is our A here. So if 10 is A, the other one is 8. So 8 is just 8. 8 is just 8. And therefore, it therefore means that our hexadecimal number will be A8. A8. So look at that sequence. Look at that sequence. You're given 168. You write it into the long binary of 128, 64, uh, 32, 16, 4, 8, 4, 2, 1. Then you, you subdivide them into two groups. And then now use 8, 4, 2, 1 to get the specific uh, hexadecimals and then put them together. We get A8. That is how we do that. Very simple. Uh, the only thing you're doing the last one is not to do the reverse. When you're given A8, for example, how do you go back to decimal? There we go. So I'm giving you D2. D2. I'm giving you D2. D2. And you do the same thing. We go the reverse way now. If I give you D2, D represents which number? in uh, Among the decimal numbers, D represents? 13. Very good. So if D represents 13, write 8, 4, 2, and 1. And you tell me which numbers there do you add to give you 13? Eight, four, two, one. Which numbers do you add to give you 13? Someone? Eight, four, one. Very good. So fill the remaining one with zero, under two, put a zero, and you should now have one, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one.
So put one under eight, under four, and under one, and then under two, put a zero. Correct. Then the other hexadecimal was two. What is two into binary? We'll get, if you know what that is, which numbers do I have to give you two? What is the full binary? Someone to give me the binary, please. Zero, zero, one, zero. Correct, correct, wonderful. That's very, very amazing. Now the next step, you have four bits for D and four bits for two. Now I want you to put them together so that they're eight in total now. Put them together so that they're eight in total. Once you put them together, start with one, one, zero, one, and then you continue with zero, zero, one, zero. Put them to form eight bits, and then you convert that to binary. Once they are eight, you now start with the left one should be 128, 64, 32, uh, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. 128, uh, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. Then add the numbers. Where there's a 1, add the number of top there. It, I want to know what the answer is, guys. If you add the numbers there, what number do you get eventually? 210. 210. You get 210. Very, very good. And that's what you do. I mean, that's how we do it. Huh? That's how we do it. I'll just give you some uh, small assignments now to be ready to go and do more conversions over there. But that's how we do it. One is almost the, the opposite of the other. I hope everyone has to be doing. Now, uh, so let me give you some assignments here. Let me give you some assignments here to go and work on so that you are actually good to go. So each part, each, each of this chapter, normally has what is called, uh, so the first assignment, by the way, write 516 for uh, the de binary decimal, 516, uh, 519, I had already given you that, 519, 5110, also put that, that's a binary game, play it as much as you can, get to, get to level four, I want to see who can get to level four, and share with us your results in the group. Then, the next ass assignment, this is just a quiz now. There's a quiz on 525. 525 is a quiz. 525 is a quiz. All right. 525 is a quiz. And the last quiz is 532. 532 is a module quiz of everything you have learned today. Everything that we have learned today. Uh -huh. All right, all right. So that is the quiz there, which is the hexadecimal equivalent of 202. Okay, so on and so forth. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's important uh, to note that, okay, the last one is 532, as I told you, is the module quiz. The module quiz is uh, 532. 532. Do those quizzes, and they have a uh, check. You fill in, you mark it, the answer. Then you click check once you have finished the 14 of them and you can reset please avoid using show me because that is for lazy people no way my class doesn't have lazy people my class has people who are work very hard so please avoid saying show me because show me does not make you to learn okay so i uh, i think that marks the end of our class for today and um i would like to end there now Unless there's a question, guys. Is there anyone with a question? Anyone have a question? Today, uh, we're going to finish at 7.10, which is a good one. Meanwhile, tomorrow we look at chapter 6 and 7, layer number 2, data link layer. And in layer 2, and layer 7, I'm sorry, in uh, layer 2, which is chapter 6 and 7, we're going to talk about the... Uh, MAC address, how does the manufacturer assign the MAC address to the devices? All devices, mobile phones, tablets, computers, printers, TVs, all of them have a unique MAC address. And then you're going to look at the first device, which is the switch. Guys, each of these classes are very important. If you miss one, 
then going into the other one will give you much problems, but it's true. So we look at the switch. How does the switch work? What is composed of, how does the switch, uh, I mean, do its work? What helps do its work? So that is what we'll be talking uh, about next. We look at the data link layer and then look at the Ethernet switching or the work of the switch. All right. So uh, if, if that's the case, then I would like to end the class. I'm going to send you uh, guys the link, put the announcements again, uh, uh, put them. Uh,